Scalloway in central mainland was Shetland's capital until 1708. The town is well sheltered from the Atlantic, which means its harbour has long been a shelter for ships on Shetland's wild Atlantic coast. Fishing is the mainstay of the economy, with many vessels operating from here. Galloway Castle was built by Patrick, Earl of Orkney in Shetland in the 17th century. It, it was built by forced labour and he is painted as a very black figure but it, it seems that maybe some of these ideas, a picture of him came from the landowners in Shetland who were jealous of him. He led a colourful life and in the end he was beheaded for treason, as was his father and his son. Only the tower now remains of the castle, which dominates the harbour at Scalloway. This is the great hall and underneath were the kitchens, but only for a hundred years was it in use. After then it started to go into disrepair and the roof came off and generally disintegrated, but still this remains. This was my Lord's bedroom and he must have been very fit to come up those very steep stone stairs that lead here. Galloway Museum was opened by the Norwegian Prime Minister in 2012. It tells the story of Scalloway from the earliest times and has exhibits showing the life of the local primary school and of some of Scalloway characters. but the main exhibits are of the Shetland bus. The Shetland bus was based in Scalloway from 1942 to 1945. It was the name given to the operations between Norway and Britain during the war after Norway was invaded by the Germans. It helped to boost the morale in Norway, knowing that people in Shetland and Britain were helping them to resist the Germans. And so for several years, small boats ferried back and forth between Norway and Shetland, carrying ammunitions and supplies for Norwegian and British agents. It was a great peril to them, for they had to do it during the winter months and they had to pretend to be fishing vessels. Many men, 44 in fact, lost their lives during these two years and there is a memorial in the Scalloway to them. A few of them were teenagers, a few of them in their 30s, but most of them were in their 20s. Not all of these agents uh, were, were drowned or killed, but their stories read like something out of a film. Some of them married local girls and settled back in Scalloway, or some went back to Norway. The links have always remained and are still very strong between Shetland and Norway. Prince Olaf Slipway was built during the war for these operations and Prince Olaf himself came to see where it was and to open it. Opposite is Norway House, so-called because that was where the Norwegians, Norwegian agents lived during the war, up in the attic rooms. The Shetland bus operations naturally had to be top secret and they were in Shetland, so much so that the people a few miles down the road at Lerwick had no idea what was going on.
Luna was the first base for the Shetland bus before the operation moved to Scalloway in 1942. It was a very sheltered and secluded harbour here, but because of its seclusion was not so convenient, which is why it moved from the east side of the island round to the left to Scalloway. The operation was run from Luna House, which dates from 1660. Luna House was the home of Lieutenant David Howard, who together with Major Leslie Mitchell ran the clandestine operations, 198 missions to Norway. On his death, he asked that his ashes be scattered here, even though he had left here after the war. This was where his heart was. Farming is a major occupation on the Shetland Islands, after fishing and the oil industry. On the island of Burra is a restored croft house at Duncanslate. Nowadays, many people own their farms. In the Scalloway Museum, there are pictures of women at work, on the land, in the house, doing so many things. They carried peat on their backs in baskets, made specially so that their hands could be left free to knit as they walked along. This is the roofless kirk of St Lawrence at Papil, one of the earliest Christian sites in Shetland. Papil comes from the Norse word for priest, like Papa and the island of Papa Stor. There were three churches on Shetland with the towers and this one here is one of them. The ancient church was demolished in the 19th century and rebuilt using stones of the old church. But that church only lasted barely a hundred years before it fell into disrepair. However, the, the churchyard is the oldest one on Shetland still in use. This altar stone, dating to around AD 700, was found in the graveyard here in 1943. The scene depicts monks travelling over the sea to bring the gospel to Shetland. The priest travels on horseback. The monk behind the horse wears a satchel over his shoulder. The stone is part of the altar from the first Papal church. The Papil stone has an unusual mix of Christian and pagan symbols. At the top is a cross with monks at either side and at the bottom are two strange creatures pecking at a face. These bird men may have been added later or may be symbols from pre-Christian belief. And the stone may have been used as a preaching cross where converts stood to hear a priest reading a religious service. The tongue of land at the north end of the Loch of Tingwall was originally an island known as the Ting Holm. It was the site of Shetland's Lawthing Parliament until the 1570s. The Lawthing was an assembly where local people and officials tried offenders, interpreted the law and enacted new legislation. There are many other Lawthing sites throughout Britain and Scandinavia and they occur wherever Norse people settled and brought their laws. The Lawthing site was abandoned around 1600 and in 1602 Shetland's head court met at Earl Patrick's Castle in Scalloway. After Patrick's time there were no more Lawthings and in the 1700s local landowners tore up the stones on the holm so that it could be used to pasture sheep. As well as being the site of Shetland's Parliament, Tingwall was the base of the Archdeacon of Shetland, the main churchman in the islands. St Magnus's Kirk stood next to the Archdeacon's house. By the 18th century it was ruinous. It was dismantled and its stones used to build the present kirk in 1790. On the west coast of Shetland are lovely bays with white sand and this one here 
is it the end of the Isle of Burra? Magical looking place. We've come down the track, just the sound of the lambs and of the sea on the sand. You don't come to the Shetland Islands for hot sunshine, but even so, in the wind and the rain and the cloud, it's still so beautiful. <laughs> 